Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. In my server projects, small form factor projects, and low profile build projects, I've been using Noctua low profile coolers for many, many years. In fact, our own ESXi server that we have here that does all of our other tasks uses one as well. Except the thing is, all of those systems are Intel systems. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now and turn on that little bell to receive notifications. We upload basically every single day of the week, so do yourself a big old favor and make sure you're subscribed. Now, Noctua sent over their Noctua NHL 9A AM4 low profile 37 millimeter high cooler for AM4 sockets. And these are designed for Ryzen processors that have a TDP of 95 watts or less. Let's check it out. Okay, let me clear this up from the start. In no way am I a Noctua fanboy or have they paid us a single cent for anything I'm about to say. Noctua, over the many years of me using their products, have consistently proven themselves by making some of the most competent cooling gear. Full stop. Not only that, they make some of the highest quality PC components on the market. Full stop again. Okay, and before we go on about the color of the fans and why you don't like their aesthetics, just be aware. Noctua creates products that favor function over form. The, the colors they use are kind of like their calling card. The color of a fan should never be a contributing factor if you're looking for straight out performance. If you don't like it, don't buy it. If you don't have an open mind, skip this video. However, if you do have an open mind and you want a product that does exactly as advertised, this video is for you. The Noctua NHL 9A AM4 is a revised version of the older cooler they had for AM3 sockets designed for low profile systems like mini ITX systems, NAS enclosures, rack mount server chassis, and basically any type of application where the space is the most important thing. Alrighty, first off, let's see what's in the box and what you get for your hard earned money and take a physical look at the cooler before we talk about those important numbers. In typical Noctua fashion the build quality is stunning everything just feels premium even the packaging feels premium speaking of the packaging let's talk about what you get in the box itself you get four bolts to attach the cooler to the rear of the board as well as a backing plate to hold the cooler to the socket you get this little inline resistor that allows you to run the fan at low rpms for quiet installations as well as a large syringe of noctua nth1 thermal compound you also get some longer screws just in case you wanted to use a thicker fan and a very premium looking Noctua badge. The installation is very straightforward. There are a few ways to do it, but this is the way I'd recommend that you do it and the way that I've done it with all of our server boards. Place the cooler with the cold plate facing up and apply a normal PDOT amount of thermal compound. Lower the motherboard with the CPU already installed onto the cold plate. Place the backing plate onto the motherboard and fasten the four screws and plug in the CPU fan. The process took me around one to two minutes to complete. And I'd recommend taking the motherboard out of the system if you've already got it in a system and also if you're going to remove a pre-installed or pre-existing cooler. By now, I'm guessing you wanna know all about how it performs. Spoiler alert. It's a lot better than I was expecting. Let's check out those numbers for all of those numbers, people. I tested this on one of our B450 micro ATX setups. The CPU I tested this with was the Ryzen 5 2600. Since it's rated at 65 watts TDP, and this cooler supports up to a max of 95 watt TDP CPUs, it seemed to be the perfect fit for this application and also probably the CPU that you would use this cooler on in a real world setup. The motherboard we used is the Gigabyte B450 Aorus M with 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM in the Fantex N2 Evolve MATX with all of the panels and all the filters removed for maximum airflow. In fact, you can see the setup right behind me. It's basically just an open air test bench at this, at this point. Not that, it, not, not that it matters at all, but I also threw in a Gigabyte Radeon Vega 64 Gaming OC as well. 
but b because we, we basically needed to see what the system was doing. Along with the Noctua cooler, we also tested the same setup with the stock cooler for the Ryzen 5 2600 and a Wraith prism that typically comes with this bigger brother, the Ryzen 7 2700X, just to add a little bit of context. For these tests, we let the system idle for 20 minutes with each cooler installed to get a proper idle temperature, and then we use the Ida 64 stress test for 20 minutes with each of the coolers as well to get a proper set of temperatures for a fully loaded CPU. The fan speed for all of these tests was set to 100% as well, so there was no variance or anything different really well obviously the fans are different but that's a whole nother thing at idle with the stock cooler we see the average temperature after 20 minutes sitting at around 30 degrees celsius at idle with the wraith prism we see the average temperature after 20 minutes sitting around 33 degrees celsius at idle with the noctua cooler we see the average temperature after 20 minutes sitting around 39 degrees celsius don't be fooled by this idle temperature there's a lot more in it. At full load with the Noctua cooler, we saw an average temperature after 20 minutes sitting bang on 70 degrees Celsius flat. With the stock cooler sitting at around 77 degrees Celsius. And with the Wraith Prism basically stomping both of the coolers at just 46 degrees Celsius. There's no surprises with the Wraith Prism results. However, this video is not about the Wraith Prism. It's about the Noctua NHL 9A AM4. At the end of the day, would I recommend this Noctua cooler for your small form factor system? Absolutely. It's a lot quieter than you'd imagine. Even at 100% fan speed without the inline adapter, it's just not that loud. It's significantly better than the stock cooler for the Ryzen 5 2600. It's really well made. It's super easy to install. And with the price of just 40 US Freedom Credits, I think it's pretty hard to pass up if you're building a small form factor PC. If you're interested in grabbing one of these coolers, there is a link in the description down below. Like I mentioned just before, they're going for around about 40 US dollars on Amazon, which is an absolute bargain in my opinion. Before we finish up though, I haven't had much of a chance to test other low profile AM4 options. Feel free to make any suggestions in the comments for low profile coolers that you guys are using or ones that you'd like to see us do tests and we'll try and do an AM4 low profile cooler roundup before the, the year is up. The year? The year is up? No, before the year is up. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Tell us what we did wrong. Just basically tell us anything. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And I'm pretty impressed with this little guy. It's only, it's, it's really thin, like just a little bit <laughs> fatter than your finger for a heatsink. It's, it's impressive.